how to make the best gin and tonic? <laughs> That's an early question for this morning, but it's kind of crucial uh, for me at the uh, in my business. I've heard and asked this question hundreds of times in the past years. Bartenders, bar owners, colleagues, <coughs> master distillers, consumers, obviously, you guys, I'm asking you that question today. The answer or the result was the following. Same answer, but different. Same answer, because obviously, when you talk about gin and tonic, what comes to your mind is gin on one side and tonic on the other one. Simple. Complex. Because in terms of learnings, talking with the master distiller, he told me, you know, for me to make the best gin, it took me three years. 300 tries. Mixing and blending 47 different ingredients. Fresh one, the aggregated one, sourced across so many partners around the world. And then mixing and blending and distilling and then tasting, having consumers to test it and then back again to the distillery and change and change and change the recipe. It was key also for him to control some part of it, some part of his sourcing, some part of his suppliers, or to subcontract others. So it was for him to find the right balance. So about gin or tonic, it's a question of ingredients, it's a question of the right partners, and it's not that easy. <coughs> Another remark, ice. Of course, gin and tonic with that ice is not good enough. With ice, size matter. Why? Because you need to have a decent size of your ice so that the water won't melt too fast. So to avoid that your drink is going to be diluted. It's another piece of complexity. The glass, should it be large, should it be small? Again, the choice is also something that belongs to you. The environment where your ingredients, your gin, your tonic, your ice, is key. The little twist the cinnamon stick that we have here, the fresh peel from the orange. Again, these are some personalization items that you might have to make the best gin and tonic in the world. And then to finish, it's a question of mixing and blending all these different techniques, all these different partners, all these different suppliers, to make sure that then you're going to deliver to your consumer the best gin and tonic. I believe that you have your own recipe, but again, not as simple as it <coughs> might look like. So then, I apply that same kind of recipe at Panorica for media and content. What's the best? media and content approach. Again, simple, media on one side, content on the other one. But as you can see, there is the same complexity. My job with my team is to define that perfect serve. That perfect serve in between like first the ingredients, the content, the media partners, the consumer data, is the 555, <coughs> Is it a free to one? That's going to be the key question. It's about the preparation. It's about how you're going to make it. It's about how you're going to mix it. A lot of people talk about internalization. We have decided to take that route for part of the preparation, for part of defining the system. Yes, we work directly with publishers. Yes, we work directly with MediaTek 
uh, honors because we believe that it's relevant, makes sense from an efficiency point of view, from an effectiveness point of view. So not only do we have direct benefits, tangible ones, but also I believe that if we want to reach that perfect serve, we need to have everyone sitting at the right table, at the same table. But to sit at the same table, you need to have people speaking the same language. <coughs> so by having that direct relationship with some partners within the media and content ecosystem, this is enabling our organization of Pandorica to upskill the level of expertise of our team so that they can speak the same language as publishers, as media agencies, as media owners. CPC, CPL, Clip Through Rate, etc., etc. Programmatic, <coughs> that nobody understands anything. And what we want to avoid is that confusion, is that frustration in between our teams and the different partners of the ecosystem. Hence the reason why we have that need to tackle the problem directly and to go for direct relationship. Internalize when relevant, contract with that tech, get the most of it, take the added value, control that added value, partner with publishers, that's something we have started uh, for the past two years, and perform with agencies. As advertisers, the point is not to say we don't want to work with media agencies. Our point is to say, how do we make sure that we perform together in the best way possible? Because again, what matters is the consumer. What matters is to be able to meet its expectation, to meet its needs, so that he can obviously favor, he can obviously select our brands among the ocean of different brands is being exposed. You're shaking. At one point, you need to obviously shake all these ingredients, shake all these partners, etc., etc. So, which means that it's a pure question of ways of working. It's a pure question of saying, okay, how can I make the most and the best of each of the partners? of my ecosystem. It's about upskilling our teams. It's about training them. So I tend to travel a lot in the different markets where you operate. So to make sure that this conversation happens. So to make sure that the same language is being spoken. So to make sure that agencies are sitting at the same table with publishers, with advertisers, etc., 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 and that we work on the common objective, the best media and content approach. Efficiency and effectiveness. It's about that test and learn approach I was talking about. When you go for 200 different tests to make your best gene, you can fail, you're going to succeed, you're going to try, you're going to explore, you're going to look for different cons consumers, you're going to personalize. And that's exactly the framework that we want to have, that we want to go for. And that's about measuring, obviously, through consolidated dashboards, our performance towards the different consumers or profiles we are talking about. It's about injecting data, it's about mastering data, it's about owning as an advertiser this data, but it's also about sharing a single source of data and proof with our partners. With publishers, with media agencies, with ad tech companies. It's not about naming and shaming, it's about saying, okay, one single source of truth, how can we do better? How can we invest at it? 
because again our common objective is to be the best. Obviously, it's about consumers. It's about serving that perfect mix of consumers. After no account, we know that the way people are going to consume our products would differ from a country to another one. Occasions are very different. In some countries, we would have some cognac as an example in nightclubs. In other, it would be during dinner. Even for others, it would be after dinner. Moments are different. High energy in nightclubs, maybe low energy after your dinner. Maybe you would mix that spirit with a soft drink for some markets. Maybe not. Maybe flavors are more important for some consumers in some markets than others. So it's a question also of addressing formats, of addressing innovation, of being bold, testing things <coughs> with our publishers, with our partners, and being aware of what innovation would look like. And it's the reason why, again, it is key for us as advertisers to be involved in that train of innovation that publishers are pushing through, that media agencies are pushing through, that media owners are pushing through, etc., etc., etc. At Penoka, we are more than eager to test this dynamic that, that we have internally. So again, to finish, it's the question of simplicity versus complexity, for sure. But within that, it's about the right balance. It's about the perfect serve that we can go for with our consumers. It's about the added value. What can that partner bring me as an added value so that our strategy is going to be better. It's about sharing this added value. It's about the same language <coughs> among us, but also within the organization. Every time I write down the deck internally, I have it approved or reviewed by my financial director. If he gets it, he means it's ready to go. Because again, he's from a different community, but we are in the same business. If I manage to do that, he will also become my ambassador among the organization. And it's about ultimately aiming for that perfect serve. It's hard, there's a long road, but I believe that working all together in that ecosystem towards one single objective will enable us to get that best gin and tonic or that best medium content.